All right, today we are going to be starting with tutorial 3 of 2019 Python programming course and today we are going to cover all of these. I hope you are following this tutorial because it takes 3 months and we are going to be used or get used to Python. You need to be consistent so just subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below this video if you have not subscribed so that you get notified when I make these lessons. And one good thing about this lesson is they are very easy to follow. The time is really short, so if you spend uh, maybe 20 minutes, or if you want to do more by yourself, you can spend more, maybe 30 minutes per week. By March, you should be a good Python programmer. So really, you need to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And also, you see a bell icon beside the subscribe button. Also, click on it to enable notification. So today, we are going to be covering this. If you have a notebook, maybe you can make note of what we are covering so far, because in the previous tutorial we also covered about six different topics. So the first thing we are going to be talking about is multiple assignments. Now multiple assignments is amazing. I'm just going to write it so that you see how it works. It means that you can assign in just one line you can assign data to more than one variable. So for instance you can say name is equal to me is equal to and then find son. Right, so at this point, what is happening here is that we've actually written two lines in just one line. So the same as saying name is equal to kindson, and this is how it works in other programming languages. But last year I figured out that it also works in AngularJS, which is a part of JavaScript. You let me know if you also like to take this course. So you can see what is happening. We have name is equal to me is equal to Kinton. So we are having two assignments. And what makes it more interesting, you can also make uh, add more variables to it. So as much as, as you add variables, the same data is being assigned to the variable. So that is really very interesting. So the same thing goes with numbers. So you can say A is equal to B is equal to C is equal to 45. So it's also the same thing. So you can actually try it. So if I say my name, if I take out this and then use a print statement to see how it is, I say me. On the second line, I print name. And in the third line, I print my name. So if I click to run this code, you can see that it prints, it displays the three of them. So it's really amazing. And another thing is... A different variation of this you can assign several variables to different data so what I mean is that let me take out this so now you can say you can say name is equal to me is equal to Kinson Kani and then you have tech pro so what is happening here is that it does what is called consecutive assignments. So the first one, sorry, I got it wrong. So this is actually, this is what I want to do. All right, so this is exactly what I want to do. So what we have here is consecutive assignments. We have the first one gets Kinson, the second one gets Kani, and the third one gets uh, Tech Pro, right? So this is also amazing because what we are doing now is we are doing three lines in just one line. You can see that. So just take some time to try it out yourself. So if I go ahead to do a print statement of me and I go to the second line to do a print statement of, uh, let's say the first one is his name. And the second one, I do a print statement of my name. And the third one, I do a print statement of me. So, and I go ahead to run it, you can see that it displays the three of them. So these are some of the tricks that uh, real new programmers don't really know. And this is something that if there is a competition, your code will be much more readable to, than somebody that doesn't know about some of these things. All right, let's now look at some standard data types, numbers, strings, uh, list, tuple, and dictionary. Now the focus is going to be list, tuple, and dictionary. All right. So basically, when we talk about numbers, you already know that we have uh, numbers like float, we have long, and we have integer. Integer is something like num is equal to 45, 
So this is an integer number. If we go ahead to say num1 is equal to 45.4.9, this is a float, and we can also have a data type called string, which you already know. Uh, I've written something like this. So all these are called assignment statements. So in Python, will you have to declare a variable before you assign it? No. Python is going to look at the number and then figure out what kind of variable this is. And now this is very important because you may be asked what is the difference between data types in Python and in other programming languages. In, in Python, you don't have to declare a variable. For instance, in Java, you need to say something like int norm, right? Something like this. But in Python, you actually do that uh, automatically because the compiler actually figure it out on its own. So we also have list tuple and dictionary. List tuple and dictionary are collection types in Python. So that is something you need to know, collection uh, data types. So very important because you need to know how to manipulate list of items, maybe set of student in a school or set of scores in an exam and things like that. So let's see the difference between list tuple and dictionary because you may be asked what is the difference between them. Now, the easiest way to understand it is to just use an example. So let's create a list called my list is equal to, you open with a square braces and also close with a square braces. Now whatever you specify inside this place will be separated by comma. So if I create certain objects, so let's say names of people, Right, and then you add more names, and so on and so forth. So one good thing about dictionary is that you can all, you can just print out the dic sorry about list is that you can just use a single print statement to print it by specifying the name of the list inside the print function. So if I go ahead to run this, it displays as you can see everything in the list. Another way you can to display items from a list is to use a loop, but that I'm going to be covering it when I'm, I'll be discussing loops in Python. Now the question is, what is the difference between a list and a tuple? Now I want to test how much you are following by creating a second list that is similar to this one, and I'm going to ask you to spot out the difference between the two. So now I'm creating a list called my list one, and I'm going to put exactly the same items inside this list. So what I'm going to ask you to do is tell me what is the difference between the two. Both of them are valid collection data types in Python, and they have exactly the same data inside. So what is the difference? And interestingly, if I print out my list one, so if I use a print statement to print my list, and I use another print statement to print my, my list one, and I'm going to run it, and you can see that basically there is exactly almost the same thing. So one thing you need to understand here is, and the way the syntax is in Python, a list is specified using a curly braces and using a square braces and a tuple is specified using uh, uh, using rounded braces. So say several times, list is specified using using what? Square braces, tuple using rounded braces. List is for square braces and tuple uses rounded braces. So that is one thing you need to know. This is a tuple I created here. It's not a list, it's a tuple. So, and this is a list. Now, one thing I want you to know is, because this is not the real difference. This is just a synt uh, syntactic difference, this difference in the syntax. But the key thing is, tuples are immutable. That is the long and short explanation. So in any case, just say tuples are both immutable. Tuples are immutable, lists are mutable. What it means is that when a tuple is created, you can no longer change what is in there. So for instance, if I can easily say, change a list by saying my list, my list two is equal to three, 
sorry I'm getting this wrong, so it's actually uh, using the same square braces, my list 2 is equal to the ender, and now see what is going to happen when I run this code. So at this point you can see that the next item, which is like the third item in the list, changes to oleander. Now this is item 0, item 1, item 2. So when I say my list 2 is equal to oleander, it goes to the third item and actually changes it. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a tuple and then you see whether it's going to work or not. So if I say my list 1 is equal to Alright, so if I run it, it's going to fail. The reason is because tuples are imitable. You cannot actually change anything in a tuple once you have created them. So here you can see it tells you tuple object does not support assignments. So the fancy way of saying it is that tuples are imitable in Python. Now, what about the dictionary? Let's quickly look at the dictionary before we conclude with operations on them. So dictionary stores what is called key value pairs. So the easiest way to understand it is to create it. So it actually stores two items, per, or two, two values or two, or two items per, 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 per element in the list. So let's say dict1 is equal to, this time, notice that we are going to use curly braces. So in this way you can say name Kinton. So actually you need to enclose in quotes. Sorry. Alright, so we have name Kinton. I actually I can add address. Number forty five uh whatever that means. <laughs> Just so let me add a, a dead item, let's say phone, my phone number. So it's going to be this. So you can see dictionary is actually completely different from a list and a tuple. So dictionary contains key value pairs. The first item in the dictionary is a key, and the second item is the value. So I'm going to go ahead to print out this dictionary and let's see how it goes. So I'm going to print out this one. So if you print it out, oh, is a problem there? Say. Top whole object does not support assignment, so this is fairly problem. Let's take all these and then let's go ahead to run it. Alright, so you can see that it prints out exactly the way it is. Name Kinton, comma. So comma separates the elements of the list. So we have two items per element. Alright, so try to play around with this and I'm going to move to the next tutorial now, which I'm, go I'm going to discuss uh, data type conversion. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe if you've not subscribed and also leave a comment to let me know if there's something you have challenged with and I'm going to be there to explain it clearly for you.